This training video was developed at the Statistical Services Centre at the University of Reading. It's part of a set of resources aimed primarily at researchers. This is the second in our series of demonstrations on using CS Pro for data entry and checking. In this demonstration, we will set up the data dictionary for the baseline questionnaire introduced in the previous demonstration and displayed on your screen now. We open CS Pro and create a new application. We select data entry application and select a location and name for this new application. We will call this baseline survey. And we allow CS Pro to create the dictionary file, which will have the extension DCF. CS Pro will automatically create a space for the ID item or identification items and a record that it calls the baseline survey record. In CS Pro, a record relates to a level in the data. Our questionnaire has two levels, household and activity, so we need two records in CS Pro. First, we will rename the existing record. We right click on baseline survey record and we choose modify record. We'll change the label to household record and the name to household. We tab along to the end of the row to save this change. Note that the household record is required and the maximum number is one, i.e. there is one and only one household record for each questionnaire. Next we will add a record for the activity level data. We right click on household record and this time we choose add record. We'll give an appropriate label and name. For this record we set required to no, uh, which will allow for households which have no activities. We set the maximum to seven, allowing for a maximum of seven activities in any one household. This matches the space allocated in the questionnaire. For your own surveys, you'll need to consider what a feasible maximum value is. After pressing enter or tab to, at the end of the row, we press escape to stop adding records. CS Pro has created a default identification item. This is a numeric item of length one. We will change this, making this the village code. We right click the current item and we choose modify item. We change the label to village code and the name to bill code. We also change the length. A length of one will only allow villages numbered 0 to 9, i.e. a maximum of 10 villages. Let's assume we have more than 10 but fewer than 100 villages in our survey. A length of two is therefore required. The length indicates the number of digits available to store the number. So numbers greater or equal to 100 but less than 1000 would need a length of three. We tab to the end of the row to save this change. The unique identifier for our questionnaire comprises the village code and the household number. So we need to add the household number to the identification. We right click village code and choose add item. We give an appropriate name, appropriate label and name. And again, we set the length to two. This allows us up to 99 households in any one village. We press escape to finish adding items. We now add items to the household record and in doing so we'll consider the length required for items corresponding to different types of question. We right click on household record and we choose add item. Note that here the identification item is already included and this new item will start at position number six. The first two items we need are the sex and age of the respondent. These are both single digits as we're using one digit numeric codes. So the length for these items should be one. 
The next two questions are household size and the number of economically active people in the household. These are numeric items. And to determine the length required, we need to consider a feasible range of values. Some households may have more than nine members, but we'd not expect any household to have more than 100 members. Therefore, if we set the length to two, this will allow households with up to 99 members. In a later demonstration, we will show how we can place further restrictions on these numbers. Question 2A consists of four checkboxes. These are common in surveys, and a tick in the box indicates a yes response, while an empty box indicates a no response. For CS Pro, we need to translate these ticks and blanks into numeric codes. It's commonly accepted to use one for yes and naught for no. These are single digit codes, so the length for each of these four items will be one. In 3A, the question about the kitchen, pit latrine and bath shelter are also yes no questions, but of a different format. Here the numeric codes of one for yes and two for no are set within the questionnaire. These items will be created in the same way as those for 2A, but the difference will be seen when we come to setting value labels and missing value codes illustrated in later demonstrations. For question 2B, we need to consider how large a feasible value is and whether we want to include decimal places. For this demonstration, we will assume feasible values are less than 10,000 and will allow for two decimal places. In determining the length, we need to allow space for the decimal point itself. There is an option not to store the decimal point, but this is not recommended. Thus, we will need a length of seven, four digits before the decimal, two after, and one for the decimal itself. So we'll set the length for these four items to seven and decimal places to two. Note that because we have put number of decimals to two, decimal places to two, the decimal character column is set to yes for these four variables. The seven items we need for question three are straightforward. The number of rooms will be a length two, as we will allow for large dwellings with more than nine rooms, but the other six items are all numeric codes of length one. We press escape to finish adding these items. In the same way, we need to create the five items needed at the activity level. The activity code needs to be of length two, as we have 26 possible codes, so two digits are needed. The other four items are checkboxes and can be treated in the same way as the checkboxes for sources of income. We have now defined the individual items needed for our data entry system. In the next demonstration, we will create value sets to give descriptions for the coded items and to set feasible ranges for some of the non-coded items.